to the Isaiah Factor Uncensored, and we're here live at the Union Kitchen in Bel Air. Joining us tonight, we will have State Representative Ron Reynolds to talk about the controversial case that came down last Friday. Here's more in this report. It's no secret some attorneys around the country have found ways to rip off their clients. Recently in Houston, an attorney who's also a state representative was accused of not giving his client a $250,000 settlement check. That client said her daughter was killed in a car crash and the money was from the civil case. But for two years, Nancy Calloway said her attorney, state representative Ron Reynolds, never gave her a dime. Calloway sued Reynolds and a judge hearing the civil case awarded the mother a half million dollars that money is to be paid by Reynolds. Money doesn't replace your child so this is just gets me closer to closure so that I can put rest in peace on a gravestone. This whether I see another dime whether I saw another dime from the beginning there's nothing that replaces your child. Reynolds says he is filing an appeal to the judge's ruling. Joining us now live here on the Isaiah Factor Uncensored is State Representative Ron Reynolds. Uh, Representative Reynolds, what happened in that case? Did you keep this family's money of $250,000? If not, why didn't they find out until two years later, and why doesn't she have any money? Well, Jose, I mean, Isaiah, I'm glad to be here today that allegations were totally false. Unfortunately, uh, the attorney did not meet a deadline and there was a judgment based on a technicality, but we're appealing the decision. We're gonna have a trial on the merits. We have the evidence and the documentation. I have the counsel checks. I have a, a settlement statement which she signed to show that she received every bit of the money from her settlement. So how much money did she receive from you and how much was the settlement? Well, the settlement was for uh, $250,000. I can't say because of attorney client privilege how much she received, but she received uh, more than one-third of the total settlement. Now, why would she say and file a lawsuit and go into court and claim she got, she received absolutely nothing, never heard from you in a two-year period? Well, actually, I have that documentation that uh, I can show where it shows in black and white that she received the settlement, and I have the counsel check showing that she cashed the settlement check. The dispute arose because at the time, she was married uh, to someone who was her husband, and he received some of the settlement proceeds, and that's my understanding of why she was upset. So, you're saying someone in her family received some of the money? She did. And she received some of the money? That's correct. That's correct. Absolutely. So, she went into court and lied. That's what you're well, saying. Well, I'm not going to say she lied. I, I, well, she said you didn't pay her well, the $250,000, and the that, judge gave I'm a saying, ruling that, for you for $500,000. All I'm saying is, is say, pay that. All I'm saying is that those allegations were not true, and we, through my attorneys, we're filing the uh, proper paperwork for a motion for a new trial so that we can present the documentation to the court to show that she received the settlement proceeds. All right, State Representative Ron Reynolds. Now, he got, guys, I'm sorry. I'm welcome. You were just listening in. Yeah, happy to be right here. also here with us, Rob Friedman. 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 Joining us now, originally this segment was about attorneys who don't follow through with their clients and mislead their clients and don't give their clients a settlement. Now, State Representative Ron Reynolds is saying that's not what happened here, but we're still moving on with that issue. So if you have an attorney who does not turn over that settlement check or does not follow through in that case, what can you do? What are your options out there? Okay, so you can sue them, and apparently this woman thought that she should sue her lawyer over the money. You can file a grievance with the state bar. You, you can file a com you can make a complaint. Uh, a lot of lawyers live and die on their reputations on the internet, and if you make a complaint on the internet, a bad review of a lawyer, it's often going to make an impression on that lawyer. If a lawyer uh, gets a bad review, that probably hurt them. People should not write bad reviews unless it's, there's a legitimate reason. But if you if you have a lawyer that actually engages in criminal conduct, then they should be treated like anybody else that's engaged in criminal conduct, and the person should go to the district attorney's office, or if it's a federal crime, they go to the United States Attorney's Office or the FBI. I mean, unfortunately, in every profession, I'm not commenting on this gentleman's case at all, I'm not commenting on you, but in every uh, profession, there are crooks, and there are crooked lawyers. And when they cross that line, people should report them to the authorities. We don't want is it crooked lawyers to fight your attorney. No, I don't think people like need to get help. Is it expensive? Well, so 
So is it difficult? Yeah, it's difficult because lawyers are are engaged in the system. They're part of the system. Uh, and so if you want to, if you have a lawyer who has done wrong or you feel has done wrong, the lawyer from the beginning has the advantage. There are lawyers who sue lawyers. There are lawyers who can help with that. But uh, generally, unless there's something in it for the lawyer to sue the lawyer, well, the lawyer's going to charge you money, right? You hire a malpractice lawyer, that lawyer is either going to want money up front or is going to have to expect to get something out of the suit. There's also lawyers in our in our community here that have gone to jail and prison, who've engaged in massive fraud of, of clients and have gone to trial, they've been charged with crime. We had a lawyer last year that was convicted in federal court. Federal court. Um, Mr. Let's go back to Mr. Reynolds. We don't want him just state representative Reynolds just standing there. Now, obviously, this is a case that ended up in court. How has it hurt or damaged you at all? Is there any damage there? Well, Isaiah, I think anytime you have someone who holds public trust like me, you're an elected official, and you have allegations against you, it can cause damage to you. So my political opponent has tried to make hay out of it, tried to smear my name from it, and tried to use it as a political wedge to get votes. I mean, so yes, right now uh, there are some who are trying to work against me to use this to get to cast me in a negative light so the people won't re-elect me. That, that is, I always say that's the biggest factor. Now, right you now. have had your marriage in case in Montgomery County where yes. you were convicted there. Yes. You're facing a year in jail there. You're appealing that, right? Yes. So why shouldn't people question your credibility and who you are as an individual if you've been convicted sure. of a crime I already? It's a very legitimate question. But if you look at the facts, if you look at what happened in Montgomery County, you can see that there was no absolutely zero evidence, Isaiah. Every single but the witness. Jury well, I, I'm anybody who looks at it, anybody who looks at it, well, you got off on the technicality there. Allegations against me were basically uh, there was it was frivolous. I mean, it was it was a a very uh, uh, racist. It has a history of racism in Montgomery County. I'm an African American Democrat who happens to be the House Democratic Will. It's an overwhelmingly Republican county. They didn't look at the evidence. They simply were judging me based upon I I've believe I've covered race in Montgomery county for years, and they've sent white people to jail. I don't think it was based on well, your skin color. I think it was based do. on the evidence that the prosecutors no, had absolutely in this particular not. case. No, no, absolutely not. Uh, in fact, I, think in fact, I, would, I, would, I would like to, I would like to sit situation. down with you and show you the transcript. I, I have a transcript. Montgomery County, and I've seen a white well, man come to jail for I'm 60 about, years. I'm talking about my particular case. Well, that, that, that maybe they had evidence of it, but anybody who, who followed the trial, who was there and heard the witnesses, I have the transcripts. I'd like to show you the transcripts. Was transcript. it a mistake that you defended yourself? Maybe. Maybe hindsight is 2020. I, I, I would not have represented myself again, but regardless, the evidence was not there, and I'm almost certain, 100%, that it's going to be tossed out on appeal because there was no witnesses that supported the state's evidence. Not one single person. Even the accomplice witness said Reynolds had no knowledge of the bar of the solicitation. And in fact, the first trial of which I was charged with a, uh, a felony, I was acquitted. And so this was a retrial on a misdemeanor case. And, and it, it is going to be thrown out of court. All right. State Representative Ron Reynolds, thank you for thank coming. You for okay. coming. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you, sir. And we'll be back with Crazy Ass Criminal. That's quite a segue.